Okay, it's at the top of the hour. Hello colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Francis Ochen and my best wishes to you all for the year 2022 and welcome to our first extended echo session for the year. Allow me to take you through some key guidance for the, the session. This is going to be a one hour long session and uh, we'll start with a presentation then followed with an, a Q&A. We implore you to join the discussion through questions, comments, and sharing your alternative experiences in the area that we'll be focusing on today uh, through our chat room. Please make use of the chat room and we are in excess of 100 and we expect that there will be a lot of discussion in the chat room. We have simultaneous language interpretation services. Uh, please keep to either the French or English channel, whichever channel is your preferred. As you are aware, our lab system strengthening community of practice started with a focus on HIV viral load but we have expanded progressively to include other diseases uh, like COVID-19, tuberculosis, and other neglected tropical diseases. And we know that assessing our diagnostic network capacity is key, and we would wish to see a strengthening of local capacity to conduct diagnostic network uh, assessments, monitoring progress and measuring impacts. So today we are glad to see Tanzania start this journey as they share with us the first tuberculosis diagnostic network assessment that was conducted to identify key strengths and improvement areas for the network and provide evidence-based recommendations to improve the whole tuberculosis diagnostic network in Tanzania. And on behalf of the Tanzanian team, uh, we are delighted to have Samuel Malungu. Samuel Malungu is the tuberculosis diagnostic specialist with the Infectious Diseases Detection and Surveillance Project that is implemented in Tanzania by PATH. And so colleagues, join me in welcoming uh, Samuel, who will take us through the first segment of our presentation today and then we'll get into the questions and answer discussions after his session. Over to you, Samuel and Tim. Thank you, Francis. Hello. Can you all hear me? So as Francis has introduced, uh, I'm Samuel Murungu and uh, I'm working with PATH Tanzania under uh, a project called Infectious Disease Detection and Surveillance. We mainly work with the uh, Central TB Reference Laboratory and the National TB and Repose Programs to strengthen the TB diagnostic uh, interventions in Tanzania together with other stakeholders. So I'm really happy today to be taking you through the first LabCorp presentations of the year. And today I'll be sharing with you an experience on TB diagnostic network assessment. Um, yes, this is what I'll be covering today. And, uh, on my right, the team of uh, stakeholders mixed both uh, the national stakeholders and uh, implementing partners who in one way or the other participated in this activity. Now, uh, just to highlight on the uh, tuberculosis snapshot of Tanzania, uh, Tanzania is a population of 59 plus million and is in a middle income country. Of course, the population number is uh, from the census estimate. And this year, we are lucky that we are going to be conducting another census, probably maybe having a number changed of the population. Um, so uh, Tanzania reported an incidence rate of 
133k uh, of people developed tuberculosis and uh, among them there were 22 uh, thousand who were kids uh, i mean of the age 0 to 14 and this was an uh, an decrease of minus 3 for for the uh, period from 2019 and the uh, over the past six or oh, yeah six or so years there have been a trend of decrease in incidence notification of tuberculosis as shown on that graph on, on your right on, on your left and it shows some treatment uh, trends and success treatment trends but Tanzania is classified as uh, one of the major six public health uh, I mean the major six countries with high TB burden uh, this is in accordance to 2020 WHO report. So I've just tried to show the uh, distribution of the disease uh, uh, in consideration to the age and sex. So the uh, Tanzania is, uh, is categorized as a high TB burden country, but it's not a high TB DR burden, but it's a high TB HIV. Uh, Twin pandemic burden, and it's eligible for GF funding for both TB and HIV. Uh, it participates in, in a global fund strategic initiatives, and also an active member of TB and P caucus and a national TB stop partnership. So now, um, highlighting the limited uh, challenge in accessing the uh, diagnostic services. Sorry. Yeah, um, the country has adopted WHO recommended diagnostics uh, that includes a this near microscope, uh, expert um, line probe assay, and TB culture for both uh, solid and liquid. And over, over the time, uh, there have been a main challenge to attain universal access to drug susceptibility testing, uh, which is due to uh, limited access to diagnostic testing using expert and the available expert machines are of course being underutilized. Now, the graph on your left shows uh, the trend of um, uh, DRTB incidences for the past years. Now, we have the people developing DRTB, which shows a negative trend, and people on treatment, it shows a positive trend, and the those who were enrolled in treatment and successfully completed treatment. And now the TB diagnostic network. A TB diagnostic network uh, uh, needs to be comprehensive of high quality and is essential to diagnose TB accurately and rapidly to link confirmed TB patients to appropriate and timely treatment. We all know that uh, an appropriate treatment uh, typically relies on the, the proper diagnostics uh, of TB. The TB services in Tanzania are mainly uh, controlled or guided by the Central TB Reference Laboratory, which is under the NTLP, which is National TB and Repros Program of the Ministry of Health. And our diagnostic structure is tied in a pyramidal shape uh, with uh, central TB reference at the top um, and zonal laboratories being the subsequent. And just to explain a little bit on the zonal laboratories, it's probably a new thing to the other diagnostic network structure. Tanzania is uh, geographically big and uh, NTLP together with the Ministry of Health in, 20, in 2014, decided to decentralize Central TB Defense Laboratory, which was overwhelmed with the uh, uh, diagnostic activities 
taking into consideration that Tanzania is big geographically. So they made in the zone labs, which were, were located into different zones of Tanzania to save the, their respective zones, at least to reduce the burden of the central TV reference lab. We have one zone, of, I mean, we have one central TV reference labs lab and we have uh, five zonal TB reference laboratories located into different five zonal regions of Tanzania. And we have intermediate laboratories totaling up to 213 and we have to about 1029 peripheral laboratories, which includes all health centers, uh, clinics and dispensaries. At the lower of, or at the bottom of the pyramid, we have the community which is feeding in the uh, information to the nearby peripheral laboratories. Now the diagnostic cascade is uh, is structured just like in the animation. So we are we are expect we are we are having a cascade of uh, identifying eligible clients who are, uh, presents have significant symptoms for TB, and we, we instruct them to collect appropriate samples for appropriate diagnostics, and we then um, document proper uh, diagnostic, and we, we have the samples collected and transferred to the labs for, uh, for uh, diagnostics. And then after the diagnostics, we, we rely on laboratory results to decide uh, placing the uh, client on appropriate treatment. And of course, we aim at having a health and TB free uh, society. Now, this is uh, a kind of justification as to why we are having a, 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 an assessment for diagnostic network. Following an end-term review of National Strategic Plan 5, which was covering a period of 2016 to 2020, the entropy had identified some major challenges. And of course, these challenges, we just focused on those which are directly related to laboratory interventions. The first one was the low bacteriological confirmation rate among the notified pulmonary TB cases. Of course, we know that the bacteriological confirmation is the direct role of the laboratory. And the other limitation was the limited number of tests accredited and ISO 15189 standards to the central TB reference labs and the zonal laboratories. As I mentioned before that the NTLP aimed at decentralizing the uh, laboratory services to the zonal labs and the zonal labs would be responsible to supervise the subsequent zones. And now the First need is to capacitate them into a full operation and a quality management system. So we, uh, there was also a gap of meeting biosafety and biosecurity standards, and a specific gap is that there was no, I, I think there is no uh, guideline, national guideline that is developed for biosafety and biosecurity, which guides implementation of TB diagnostics and a safety manner. Of course, achieving universal access to WHO recommended TB diagnostics, that there's no universal access to TB diagnostics, and especially the rapid one, which is, of course, the priority for the WHO, that the first, the, the only 23% following the 2020 report are accessing to this rapidly WHO recommended diagnostics. And the other one was receiving timely diagnostics and desired feedback due to fragmented sample transportation system. We know that we need to have a strong specimen of sample transportation mechanism in place, which will be ensuring a flow of specimen from the lower levels to the higher and the results in the same route. Now, just trying to highlight the trend of uh, pulmonary TB notifications versus with the bacteriological confirmation. There have been no uh, good performance in the bacteriological confirmation. Um, 
in average, Africa has performed it to about 65% uh, percent of the bacterial confirmed pulmonary TB. And Tanzania is on 44% uh, in, in, as of 2020. So this is a call that for laboratory diagnostic services to be improved. Now the assessment. So the challenge from the National Strategic Plan now, uh, it was a call for the USAID to support the TB diagnostic network assessment in Tanzania. Uh, the TB diagnostic network, uh, a so-called TB DNA stands for TB diagnostic network assessment. And it essentially aims at comprehensively evaluating the country's TB diagnostic network and assess the functionality performance of the national TB diagnostic network in comparison to the country's national strategic plan and achieving the uh, country targets and global targets toward eliminating TB disease. Now the TB DNA has the key objectives, which includes evaluating the TB diagnostic network, knowing the current practices and algorithms. It also aims at identifying challenges and prevent the overall diagnostic network from performing efficient and effective. It is at the end of the day proposing an evidence-based short-term, medium and uh, short-term and medium interventions to improve access, capacity, and quality of the TB diagnostic and ultimate increase to TB and DRTB uh, notifications at, as outlined in the strategic plan. So the assessment methodology. The assessment involved uh, much uh, stakeholders and of course, it, is main, it mainly involved consulting with the Minister of Health, National TB Repose Program, the Central TB Reference Laboratory, which was, uh, the, this Central TB Reference Laboratory was the main runner of this activity and the other stakeholders who are participating in uh, TB activities. And to about 35 TB diagnostic uh, clinical facilities and clinical facilities in 12 geographical regions were visited during this activity. Uh, the regions, districts, and facilities to be visited were randomly selected and, of course, taking into consideration the tired levels so that we have all the levels represented. And this was a kind of multi stage sampling, and it was led by the Central TB Reference Laboratory and the NTLP. And this was done to make sure that all the facilities uh, in the tired structure are well represented. The assessment used an assessment tool, uh, which is shortified as the TBNET tool. And the TBNET tool is a semi quantitative scoring tool, which was uh, developed in a integrated manner where it included the scorecards and, and con components from the ISLM, APHL, LabNet, and the international standards for TB diagnostics. The tool now helps to identify the stages of various aspects of the, the standard diagnostic network to describe the current capacities and identify key areas of improvement. Just to clarify, the tool is not used to assess the specific visited facility or specific visited laboratory or whatever. It, it aims at holistically evaluating the entire diagnostic network. Now, the tool has got uh, 10 components, or we call them core capacities, and in each core capacity, there are components. In each component, there are key questions that are to be staged. So as you can see, those are, are core capacities with components. So we have about 10 core capacities, and each core capacity has got its key components.
So the assessment team uh, reviewed the self-assessment. Sorry. Yeah, the assessment team reviewed the self-assessment as staging conducted by the program, visited facilities and consulted numerous stakeholders to assess the functionality, performance and the national TB diagnostic network from the perspective of its ability to meet the need to the country's national strategic plan. So just to, to make it clear, when conducting this activity, we, we involved um, team, country teams who did the self-assessment and then the external teams conducted the, the verification of what the uh, country team did. And then, then we then concluded the final findings. Now the entire process was involving the pre-assessment, self-assessment, review of assessment, and review of, of all findings from the stage one to three. So under pre-assessment, this stage involves a preparation, pre-preparations that involves collecting key information from the country, like how many diagnostic facilities do we have, what are the notifications, do they offer, what are the uh, mode of service delivery, what are the interruptions. So you have like a comprehensive information that will, will be analyzed to have a picture of the diagnostic network in the country. So the, this self-assessment stage, this is a stage where the experienced group of people from the National TB and Lipros programs and the Minister of Health and the stakeholders within the country, they do a self-evaluate their system using the same tool and they do staging using the tool that is to be used with by the verification visitors. So this activity happened in May 2021. And review of self-assessment. Now this review of self-assessment is to be done by the external teams, which this, the team should be typically external from the nation to be or the, the, the diagnostic network itself or the program. This should purely be an external team so that to avoid bias. So this team involved this Review of self-assessment involve, involve reviewing what the, the, the country team has, has scored and verif verification visit to some of the facilities to verify what the country team has, has rated or has scored for themselves. And this activity took place in June and July of 2021. Now a review of, of all findings. This involves um, reviewing what the self-assessment team uh, did and what the verification team did and reaching to consensus. And finally developing the um, recommendations and priority interventions. This happened between August and January of this year. The assessment team reviewed self-assessed staging by conducting a uh, visit in various facilities and consulted numerous stakeholders, the functionality and performance of the national TV diagnostic network. So these external visitors or external team used to interview some key stakeholders just to get some key information to whatever was claimed to be a, a, an outcome in a given um, component. So the findings, as I said before, they were based on 10 core capacities and each core capacity were five capabilities that were staged from zero to five, as you can see on your right. Uh, stage zero meaning absence of a, a certain attribute and five being attaining the international standards for that given attribute. So the tool is semi-quantitative 
uh, and it's used to identify capability stages for each component and identify areas for improvement. So it, it's automatically, I will show you in subsequent slides, it automatically identify the areas for improvement and it gives respective scores for each area. So now you can see a tool looks like that and that is a snap of a tool before feeding in any information. So it has a, a core capacity with its core, core components and in each core component there are questions and in in those questions, there might be five, six or so, but at the end of the day, if you score all of them, then, we, then it populates or it gives the average score of all those questions in a given uh, component. Now, the summary of what at the end of the day we got after having both a team assessment and self-assessment. Now, in a political, legal, regulatory, and financial framework, we had 64, 64. This was a coincidence, uh, and it showed that this was a fair score. Both the self-assessment team and the external assessment team got the same score. On the structure organization and organization of the diagnostic network, the self-assessment team got 93, and the external team got 80. Now someone might be asking himself or herself that what happens whether we have those uh, discordant outcomes. The discordant outcomes, we, as I said before, in the stage four, we are having a, a consensus meeting where we discuss the findings and we agree on which one is the right score by showing the evidence and, and, and showing why we scored the way we scored. So whatever you see there, was uh, an outcome of agreement between the self-assessment and the team assessment. So the web structure like is, is, is a simplified way of seeing how, how the scores are uh, in each specific core capacity. So you can quickly tell which core capacity was, uh, is, needs a, an improvement from just seeing that picture. So that picture, uh, it has a lot of weights to do behind before it populates like that. So the other summary of a tool is it gives the, the summary of uh, core capacity per core component. For instance, political, legal, and regulatory framework, um, the, the legislation and policies questions, the average score was four. And for the self-assessment and the team scored three, it's not that much different. And, and as, as you can see, we had 64, 64 scores for, for both self and team assessment. And the colors, so when you score zero, it codes black. When you score one, it codes red. And when you score five, it codes that color, which is, I think, deep green and it's automatic so it can quickly tell you whether you are in green or you are in red or black so that's the other summary of the tool now um, some strength of uh, of strength findings after the overall um, scoring of the tool and assessment of the diagnostic network the team formed an organized structure of TV diagnostic network with a clearly defined tires and specific roles and responsibilities led by the strong central TV and reference laboratory. There, there was also an observation of uh, a good collaboration uh, between the HIV and TB programs working in a very well led, leading excellent linkages of testing and care for patients to detecting uh, the pandemic of TB and HIV diseases. But uh, there was a suggestion that there, it would be improved by having a lateral flow, urine lateral flow uh, epilobiaminum tests, which is recommended for those people with uh, HIV TB uh, symptoms. So those are some key uh, 
uh, findings and recommendations. And it was observed that there were viable, pol there were viable policies and guidelines that are not fully implemented at levels of, at all levels of the diagnostic. Uh, at the national level, there are very good, uh, well-documented policies, guidelines, and SOPs. But when we wanted to see whether the policies were being implemented at all levels of the diagnostic, it was noted to be a challenge. Now the team recommends to enforce dissemination and implementation of policies and guidelines at all levels of the network. And of course, this is the responsibility of the Minister of Health, National TB Repose Program, and the Central TB Refers Laboratory. There was no National TB Biosafety Manual. It's the one of the poorly performed uh, uh, component. And the, uh, the biosafety cabinets at the regional and local levels were out of repair in some of the facilities. Both safety officers and all both safety dedicated personnel uh, were complaining to have minimum training records. So there should be an accelerated development and dissemination of the national to give safety manual and also providing uh, training for all the safety officers throughout the network because we know that they are leading to guide the facilities on handling TB activities in a safety man. Also, the program sh should conduct an annual screening of healthcare workers for signs and symptoms. Of course, this was noted to be a biggest challenge, especially about safety. It's a requirement that anyone who is working on TB laboratory should annually be screened for symptoms of TB and uh, the document should be kept in his or her own personnel file. And of course, this also is the responsibility of the Minister of Health, the Ethiopia and the city area. Diagnostic of pediatric was a challenging in many settings because there were lack of capacity and training in collecting specimen from children. So, uh, there is a call for mobilizing resources to train and equip facilities to collect good specimen for children. And of course, with this, we want to, I mean, a recommendation is to have a strong clinical lab interface that is uh, to have a well-trained clinicians who can identify uh, susceptible um, pediatrics and a well-functioning laboratories to capture those pediatric with TB. And it was observed that there are different practices in handling sample referral system from one place to the other. Despite of having a very good documented um, specimen referral, integrated specimen referral guideline, but the practice was observed to be different from one place to the other. So it's a call to the Minister of Health, Central TB Reference Laboratory and the National TB Repose Program to enforce implementation of integrated specimen referral guidelines throughout the diagnostic network. Uh, most of the laboratories were reported to be having an adequate number of staff. However, there was no national staffing plan supported by workforce projection. And now, one uh, and many facility reported to have lack of refresher training for staff, and there was no a system in place to assess documents and complete competence assessment for a staff performing TB tests. So the uh, government should ensure availability of well-trained, competent laboratory workers, and. Priority actions should be set, including planning for um, trainings and capacity buildings to healthcare workers, especially laboratorians. And there should be a strong competence assessment plan uh, starting from the national level down the lower levels of the network. There was a challenge with uh, key performance indicators, uh, especially on routine collection and analysis. There were standard 
um, phones or paper-based tools that were are, are used across the network to collect key performance indicators. But whenever we asked whether or not they are reviewing their performance, I mean their key performance indicators to, to translate them into information, there was no evidence to show that the, the key performance in, interventions were being reviewed at facility level. There were also lack of dedicated lab personnel, I mean lab data personnel to the most of the visited facilities. And we recommend to build capacity to staff on data review and analysis and rolling out the use of electronic information management system, which will of course simplify the uh, analysis and interpretation of, uh, of the key performance indicators. And the country has adopted the use of GXALAT, which is to be rolled out in all the uh, diagnostic facilities and people should get trained on interpretation and analysis of results using the electronic information system. There was stock out of laboratory reagents as well as triple packaging materials. Also routine verification of to ensure quality of reagents, for instance, road to road testing, proper documentation of stock outs of uh, reagents was noted to be a challenge. Now, there should be a formalized stock outs and uh, stock outs expiration and initial of corrective actions to identify root cause analysis and determine whether those challenges are regional or systemic. And then we uh, we call for a proper forecasting and quantification of the supplies for laboratory services. Now, sharing some lessons learned. Uh, from this exercise, we learned that a country-led coordination and ownership is a key in successful implementation of the diagnostic network. These activities, of course, involves uh, multi-stakeholders and it, it involves um, stakeholders at all levels from the top to the lower level. And therefore, if you have no proper coordination and ownership from the government, then you, you are likely not to successfully accomplish its implementation. So this is a pure coordinated activity which needs to be in, uh, owned by the government counterpart to have it successfully implemented. And once capacitated staffs can provide cooperation to perform the assessment visually to some of the components. Of course, this activity was like any other activities was affected by the COVID-19 pandemic and through uh, COVID-19 pandemic, we, the activity was planned to be carried out in 2020. And then because of unforeseen uh, delays of, because of that COVID-19 pandemic, then the activity was moved to 2020, 2021. And then we learned to navigate through COVID-19 to just have an activity implemented. And uh, we, we, we then involved visual meetings and assessment. Some components were done visual and we engaged the um, external consultants visually. And through that, we learned that we can, of course, attain the uh, full assessment in COVID-19 pandemic. And the, the assessment has to be pure, was, was initially planned to be pure done by the external consultants who were to travel from external countries. But because of the um, COVID-19 travel restrictions, this we deployed a local consultants who worked with, uh, with external consultants visually and it was really successful. But again, for the first time we used the electronic version tool of the uh, the TBNet tool. For the first time, Tanzania experienced using the TBNet tool on electronic version, and this helped us 
connecting with the external assessors. They were following uh, in real time as we, we, we score the performance. So some of the proposed next steps is to, Tanzania is now um, anticipating to carry out, I mean, I did this through USAID support, we'll be carrying out the dissemination meeting with the uh, Ministry of Health, NTOP, CPRL, WHO, CDC, USAID and other stakeholders who are dealing with TB diagnostics in the country to just have this information or findings disseminated to all stakeholders so that everyone while doing interventions on the lab should at least focus on the findings of the assessment. The Ministry of Health and TOP CTRL should lead co and coordinate the efforts among the stakeholders, including technical partners and donors. Of course, uh, these tasks to mobilize resources to, uh, to lead the performance of the recommendations from the assessment should be led by the Ministry of Health, Entropy and the CTRL. And now we should have a routine follow-up of the actions item developed and the, the developed and the recommendations. Like there should be a routine follow-up of the actions developed and the specific recommendations. And this should be led by the uh, NTLP and CTRL. Recommended the key interventions and priority actions uh, described in this report will of course assist Tanzania to reach its diagnostic goals with the ultimate goal to eliminate TB and attain the global TB targets. With that being said, I acknowledge uh, the Minister of Health in Tanzania, the USAID for their support, PATH Tanzania, World Health Organization, especially the Tanzania office, and thank you so much for listening. Thank you very much, Samuel. What a great and informative presentation. Uh, so colleagues, we've gone through the session and we are quite clear on the tools that was used, the methods, the results, recommendations and next steps for the country. We have also had running uh, questions, comments in the chats, and we are now moving to the next segment, which is dealing with the questions and comments in the chat. Please keep them coming, and I encourage our friends on the French channel to also share the questions and, and comments from that side, and we'll engage our interpreter at some point to support with the interpretation of those questions so that Samuel can deal with them. I know that we may not deal with all, but let's start with some of the questions that we have so far. Uh, and in no preference of order or ranking, uh, Samuel, please take this. Eric Opio is asking, what proportion of labs are doing routine acid fast bacilli and fluorescent microscopy at the zonal level of your pyramid. I would prefer that you take two questions and then we'll move it on to the next. And the, the, the next question is, is coming from Limbukani. And Limbukani is asking, what is the average turnaround time for TB results and what mode of sample transportation do you use in Tanzania? If you could take those two and then we'll move to the next set. Thank you. Thank you, Francis. Um, thank you for the questions. Um, I have my colleague with me online, Dr. Cyril and Musubiro um, Malakibung, but uh, they can help me noting some questions and probably responding to some of the questions as, as I can not note all the questions. Um, responding on the proportion of laboratory doing FB and 
FBCMA microscope for um, ZDN and fluorescent at the zonal levels, right? If I call yes. the question. Yes. Right? So as I said before, we have the five zonal, uh, zonal laboratories and all of those have got both FB and smear microscope, uh, I, I mean FB for ZDN and um, fluorescent. And uh, lucky enough, we have parallel techniques. So uh, for diagnostics, we mainly use the fluorescent microscope and uh, ZDN is used mainly for the follow-up of, for, for TB catcher follow-up as a confirmator. So just to answer that is all of the zonal labs are doing both uh, ZDN and line probe assay. I mean the, I mean the fluorescent uh, smear microscope. Okay. Are you taking the second question? And the second question is just looking at the average turnaround time for TB results. Uh, the question does not specify for which test method, because if it's culture, if it is fluorescent microscopy, if it is gene expert, they might differ. But for those that you may have ready answers, what could be the average turnaround time for TB results? And for sample movements in the country, what mode of transportation are you using if you're moving samples within the, the TB network? Yeah, so the average turnaround time, I can just categorize them to maybe per test specific. Uh, in the most, of course, the average, the TAT specific turn, turnaround time may vary depending on the uh, different laboratories and customization of their quality management system. But the average one for smear microscope is 24 hours from reception to the uh, result dissemination within the facility and in expert 24 hours. Um, uh, line probe assay, 72 hours. And um, TB culture is uh, nine weeks to 10 weeks. I don't know if I responded to the question. Right. And, and, and the sample transport? Yes, we, as, uh, we are having uh, an integrated, as I said before, we have adopted an integrated sample referral system where we use a spoke hub model for transporting samples. So our mode of sample transportation is spoke hub model, which is integrated that all samples are transported in the same mode. Thank you. Um, just to clarify the spoke, there are those facilities collecting samples, there are those which are dealing with only sample collections and they are sending the samples to the hub, which is more sophisticated and has got a storage capacity in case the sample needs to be stored for some times before being tested and eventually transportation to the testing if at the hub there is no desired testing for that particular sample. Thank you. Thank you, Samuel. Uh, I know your team will make a comment and their hands are up. The control team will give them the rights to unmute, but let's take the next question. Uh, Pascal is asking, to what extent do you think lack of accreditation or limited number of tests accredited and access to diagnostics depend on the TB program versus the wider lab system? Thank you. Um, of course, when you are talking of accreditation it refers to the quality management system. And when we talk of quality management system, we, we refers to quality and reliable results. I mean, it's timely and reliable results, which results to timely initiations in, and uh, putting uh, di diagnosed people into right treatment. 
So if, if you're asking to what extent the quality uh, affects the diagnostic, then I would say that um, I would recommend that the, the uh, quality management system should be adopted. Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Yes, um, I, I, I recommend that the QMS should be adapted to the uh, overall diagnostic network. And um, I have no a clear number of uh, how many uh, diagnostics are at least on the uh, QMS programs and how many are not. But I think to about 20% maybe okay. to uh, QMS program. If someone is hearing who has got a right uh, information, can share with the, with, with the team. Okay, so just as, as we wait, I know we will get to the Tanzanian team, but just to follow on that question, so for the gaps that are identified from this assessment in the TB diagnostic network, in your opinion, given the experience you've gone through, who do you think would be best suited to deal with them? Is it the TB program as a parallel program or the entire laboratory and network of Tanzania? Thank you for, for the question. Yeah, of course, the, uh, the proper uh, stakeholders or key team players should, be, uh, this shouldn't be a, a, a one, a one uh, a, a one team, I mean, one person challenges. This should be a cross-cutting feeling that everyone at their responsibilities should, of course, play their roles to making sure that those uh, gaps identified uh, are to be addressed and strongly led by the National TB Repose Programs who are of course the key in sourcing out who are the key players to which uh, uh, gaps and mobilizing resources from different stakeholders. And just to summarize this, I think, and it's not uh, an activity that needs to be uh, addressed by one entity. It's a cross-cutting entity uh, that needs to get those challenges or gaps uh, addressed. Thank you very much, Samuel. Can I give a minute to the Tanzanian team to comment this far? I'm also encouraging you so that uh, we can raise far the questions. Hello. Thank you, Francis. This is uh, Tanzania uh, lab group team. We would like to comment on uh, uh, some of the... Please go on. Okay, thank you. Uh, I wanted first to comment on the area. Uh, I think uh, Mr. Sam had answered very clearly. Uh, starting with the uh, your follow-up question that uh, what are the, the findings, uh, who will handle those findings? Uh, the findings from the uh, DNA, as, I mean the assessment which has been done but spearheaded by TB, some of the findings are system issues. So for those system issues, it's MOH who spearhead and look, uh, uh, look to its uh, functionality structure that uh, to solve this one, which institute or uh, which, uh, I mean, or which uh, program can handle this area. So those uh, system issues are actually addressed in a comprehensive way through the uh, MOH team. So we have a uh, uh, department at the MOH, which is they're heading, uh, the, I mean, uh, curative issues, including lab, and other diagnostic systems. So it is the uh, institute which, I mean, it is the department which oversee and make sure these uh, recommended uh, 
uh, implementation are so far done. And it's the one which assigned to specific area for intervention. But also I wanted to add on the, uh, as some had already said on the, uh, how a sample being transported. He will address that as the country previously we had a, a parallel system from program to program, one program to another program, the sample were transported in a separate ways. But after we adopted the comprehensive approach of, to optimize whatever we are doing in our country. So we came up with the uh, comprehensive guideline which address the uh, comprehensive integrated sample referral system. So uh, in, in start, we started with HIV and TB, but later on we broadened the scope to cover other pathological samples. But for other samples, just follow on the uh, programmatic sample, which are actually costed and uh, uh, funded. So we operate on that way. Thank you. Towards the end of, of the session, and we acknowledge quite a lot of um, um, uh, questions that are on, uh, on the chat. Um, and the apologies for the, uh, I think, the shaky network from um, uh, our end. But I guess we have listened to most of the um, issues at hand. Clearly, this is a very important and interesting um, uh, subject that you realize um, we need to speak more, more to this. Um, what we are saying as the lab group, we want to acknowledge that us as countries, lab group countries, we need to continue to capacitate ourselves to be able to, uh, to, do, to do these assessments, uh, to be able to do these uh, network assessments, not only doing them, but monitor the progress. After monitoring progress and actually um, evaluating the impact. So as the lab group, we are thinking maybe this is the best time to be um, developing another sub-community of practice. So uh, just preempting what is coming, we are hoping that we have the DNO sub-community of practice where we'll go into deeper and deeper issues, where we will share um, um, evidence or and experiences of what is happening there. I'm glad this is already started in uh, uh, Tanzania. Uh, a lot of interesting questions there I find um, very interesting. Maybe one that caught my eye was if the National Strategic Plan Review uh, and Program Review reviewed the same uh, 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 findings, was there an added value uh, uh, in doing this uh, diagnostic network assessment? And I think a response was yes, there is the needed value in the sense that there are recommendations uh, that were given. But I would also want to add to that answer that uh, in addition to those recommendations, are they actually implemented? So many times we've done these assessments, but have we actually worked on the recommendations? I think this is what we want to explore uh, within our community of practice. I acknowledge uh, Amri Kingalu, the rent that has been raised, um, but clearly there are a lot of questions uh, within this. So allow us to compile them and uh, this is the beginning of, of it all. I think we need a subcommittee of practice to really deal with this issue. Till we meet again, um, I think I would like to thank you. And uh... all right, thank you everyone. And I hope you have uh, enjoyed the session and goodbye.